number one thing that most bug bounty hunters struggle with is just picking a target and actually wanting to hack on it and i think there is a bit of a target fatigue going on especially with how many bug bounty programs are available nowadays on all these bug bounty platforms like hack one bug crowd integrity or yes we hack so i think it's a good time for us to sit down and talk about what makes a bug bounty program a good program to hack on but also talk about how do you select a bug bounty program to hack on and what is a good fit for you and i honestly think that makes a huge difference depending on who you are and what your goals are and what kind of assets you enjoy hacking on so in this video what i want to accomplish is i want to give you insight on what is it that i look at in a bug bounty program how do i decide a bug bounty program is worth my time and hopefully by the end of it it gives you a better idea of how to select either your first bug bounty program to hack on or your next target that you want to get involved with and find some cool vulnerabilities in but before we jump into the video do me a favor let me know in the comments what are some bug bounty programs that you hack on already and how did you select these programs can you guess what are the three things that i'm going to talk about in this video if you get them right i'll drop a comment and we'll see how many you got right let's jump into the video when it comes down to picking a target i think there are three things that are very very important so let's break them down starting with our first one which is the likability of this bug bounty program when i say likability this is just a personal preference of do you like this program enough to hack on it as an example for myself personally when i started doing bug bounties 10 years ago yahoo was the program that i enjoyed hacking on and not only because it was yahoo it was a big company but it was also because i was very very familiar with their products because if you know already about my background i'm originally from iran and back home we used yahoo messenger religiously to communicate with each other it was our version of aim or aim so i was very very familiar with their products and yahoo mail was my primary email service back then so i kind of want to hack on it because it was a product that i was really familiar with and it was also a big enough company that i was wanting to put under my resume or for a personal achievement to say i have hacked yahoo but there's also the aspect of thinking about a possible industry that you want to hack on. Maybe you like hacking on automotive companies like Ford and Tesla. So you can pick targets based on those because you like their cars, because you like their products. So you can also approach it based on the industry itself. There's also the bragging rights component to bug bounties also to say hey i have hacked this company because it's a big large company that everybody knows about i want to hack on him and say that i was able to do it so that's also another approach you can take when it comes down to picking a target again the most important thing is how much do you care about this bug bounty program how much do you like him are you going to be passionate about looking at this bug bounty program and their assets hours every day or is that just something you're doing for money so if you're looking at a bug bounty program i think it is very important to find something that you personally have some sort of an attachment and honestly bounties could be an attachment we can talk about that in just a bit but i just think if you have something that you want to accomplish with bug bounties because you like this company you're going to be more successful and if you go look at my profile some of the bug bounty programs that i've been very very successful on it's companies that i personally liked their product or it was that i used and kind of was familiar with it industry plays a role in it and we talked about that just a bit but there's also a little bit more to it you have to think about how often does this program create more futures or actually release products for you to hack on so if you think about it from a perspective of the application itself a software as a service or a SaaS platform is more likely to have more and more futures being released on a regular basis because they have customers that want more futures because they're paying for this piece of software so they're more likely to develop stuff versus go looking at a messaging app for example like whatsapp as an example of it is even though the back end of it is huge but in terms of futures if you think about it there aren't a lot of new features that they could add to this piece of software so you have to consider that while you're looking at these programs as well a good example of it is one of the programs that i've hacked on that i can personally talk to airbnb which originally was just created to have a guest be able to book a room from a host that's just an apartment or a room that's just being shared on this website later they started adding experiences they added companies they added more and more futures to this because people were asking for these different futures to be incorporated into airbnb's website
set. So you want to think about those and see how often are they going to release more futures? How fast are they going to do it? And also, is this company big enough for me to be able to hack on it and learn the ins and outs of it while they're producing more and more futures? You can also think about this as a part of the scope, because if this application is just a single messaging app, for example, they're not going to have a large backend. They may have different services that talk to each other to make this messaging app work. But at the end of it, the infrastructure itself is going to be very, very limited and it's going to have a smaller scope, which also in the topic of scope, you also want to look at how many of these assets are in the scope of this bug bounty program. So if Airbnb has everything in their core application, then obviously everything is in scope. But if it's a larger company that has a vast infrastructure and not everything is in scope, then you may have a hard time being able to get bounties. And most of your findings that are you're finding may go out of scope because the scope of the program isn't set properly. So keep that in mind. Scope does play a huge role. If you find a company that you like, go look at their scope. But also in some of these bug bounty platforms, you can actually see how often then they're adding stuff to their scope. Are they adding more and more assets to their scope every year, every month, every week? And based on that, you can kind of gauge and say, hey, is this worth my time and my investment of time to hack on him and score some bounties? But now speaking of the scope, it is time to also talk about our third item on the list, which is the program's structure itself. And I think that alone plays a huge role in picking a bug bounty program that I want to hack on. So let's talk about this one. And this one is a little weird one because you also have to look at the stats and those are just things that are out of your control. And even though you like this company, they're attractive and you want to hack on them, it's just not going to pan out right if the stats don't actually match with what we want. So a couple of things that I look at is the bounty amounts is really important because you want to make sure that you're getting paid for the work that you're putting in. Obviously, if you're looking to gain experience and you're not trying to do bug bounties and your whole goal is to just learn about web hacking, then you're doing it for free. You don't care about the money, then that's completely fine. But for somebody like me or people that want to make an earning from bug bounties and hacking, this bit is very, very important. So one of the things that I always, always tell my students, our courses, and even people that ask me about getting into bug bounties on what is the, the threshold of the bounty amount that I should opt into is that to look at what is the most likely bounty they're going to get. So for example, if you look at the stats on Hacker One or on Bug Crowd, it tells you what is the average bounty that they have paid a bug bounty on. So if it is $500, it looks like they have a lot of medium severity vulnerabilities. And if you find something of medium severity, then you're probably going to get a $500 bounty. That 500 number is arbitrary. It's something that I look for. My sweet number, the sweet spot that I look for when it comes down to looking for a good bug bounty program is that $500 mark. So if a company pays minimum of 500 for medium, that's good enough for me because if I spend six hours seven hours or a whole day's worth and find a vulnerability that's going to pay me 500 the hourly rate isn't the best it's about a hundred dollars but the fact that i could find something and it's going to give me the momentum to find more vulnerabilities and start me off at 500 then it's definitely worth it for me but also on the topic of getting a $500 bounty for a medium vulnerability, it's that a lot of times you're not going to just find one. Hopefully you find multiple. And if you're finding multiple of them, then you're going to get three, $4,000 because you have identified a number of vulnerabilities. But on the other side of these bug bounty amounts, if a medium vulnerability is being paid at 500, I also want to take a look at what is the critical bounty or a P1 bounty that this company is going to offer. So if that ranges within the couple thousand dollars, usually five to 10,000 is what I look for. So if they pay me 5000 for the critical and 10000 is even better, and that's when I decide if its program is worth it. Because a lot of time what I do with these bug bounty programs is that I set an objective and that objective is to accomplish a certain thing that is going to become a critical finding. And let me explain what that means. The objective here could be either an account takeover, it could be something like an RCE, it could be break into the internal network. And those are the objectives that I set to myself because I don't want to bound myself to a vulnerability type, but I want to bound myself into getting the highest amount of bounties that I want to be able to get from this bug bounty program. With that said, when I look at the critical bounty amount, what I want to know is what happens if I stay on this program for two weeks without a finding and within the two or three week mark, I find that critical vulnerability that's going to check off my objective that I had. And if that's not worth my time and it's only $2,000 to $3,000, honestly, I don't want to put in that effort. So I kind of look at the critical and high bounties, engage that program in my interest, 
based on those bounty amounts as well there's also one more thing when it comes down to the bounty structure is to look at how much are they communicating within their bug bounty program and one of the prime examples of this is actually t-mobile there's other couple of private programs on hacker one that do this also that i can't mention but t-mobile has a really good way of communicating they have put a specific objective on their bug bounty platform i'm not one of the people that have accomplished it but i know people that have looked at those objectives to hit an internal website or an internal asset and get received a flag in order to maximize their bounties but having that objective communicate to them it's actually showing that this bug bounty program cares about the security of their program and they want to engage with hackers more and more so look at these different things and how they communicate with you what are the different ways that are communicating with you and if they're giving you more information and objectives within their bug bounty program then the likelihood of hacking on them and being successful is probably a lot higher all right, I think those were the best three things that I could come up with. Let me know if I missed anything. Maybe there is something that you have as a criteria that also makes sense. Drop them in the comment. Let me know what I missed. And if you haven't done it already, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And become a new homie. And I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.